Hey, Rosie here with another online dating tip for you. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, the title of our video today is when he tells you or asks you to do this run. <laughs> A heart speed to the city streets. We begin to feel the fire. Okay, so uh, today's video is actually inspired by an article I wrote a while back. I was talking about uh, the strangest conversations I've had with people I met on those dating websites. Um, so I was sort of like making a list of the most weird and the most uh, strange conversation I, I had. So um, that's why I got the idea of actually making this video because a lot of ladies have contacted me uh, privately and also by leaving comments on my TikTok videos, you know, talking about, well, Rose, is this normal? Like I have met this guy and he's talking about this and like, is this how these foreigners are? So um, without further ado, we, let's get into our video. And the first one that I'm going to address, it's not actually like a weird thing, but it's, it's something that I think if somebody asks you to do this, I think you should run. And this involves uh, some of the ladies who actually have children. Um, we are talking about somebody who uh, asks you to leave your children with your mom, like leave your children back home and then you just live with him because he's like, well, um, the kind of lifestyle I want to live, I don't want to have children around me, like can you just leave your kids with your mom and just come and live with me? Uh, we are talking about either somebody who is actually planning to relocate to your country, maybe come and, and retire, because a lot of these foreigners who join these dating websites uh, are people who are maybe looking to retire or people who can work remotely, therefore they can work from anywhere. So they're like, well, I'm gonna find a lady from this country because I want to relocate to that country and also we know that things are easier when you have somebody there. So these are people who will be like, well, um, I would rather you just move in with me and leave your kids behind. This is not a good idea. Even when somebody is like, uh, I'm gonna make plans for you to move to my country but I would rather you leave your kids behind this is not a good idea. I feel like if somebody wants you, they should uh, accept you with your kids. And if they never wanted to date somebody with kids, then of course uh, they should have left you alone and went to date somebody who uh, doesn't have children. So for me, I think this is a, a red flag and I think you should run. I think you should go to somebody who will accept you as you are. And we also said it's very important to actually make it clear that you do have children. Therefore, when somebody is coming to uh, approach you, then they know what they are getting themselves into. Okay, so the next thing I think if he asks you to do this is uh, not a good idea is when somebody actually wants you to move to their country but they are not gonna facilitate you having uh, residency papers to live in that country. Uh, I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, you could find somebody who, uh, let's say, lives in Europe and then they're like, just apply for a Schengen visa or a visitor's visa. And then when you get here, you can just stay. Besides, there are many Africans who have come uh, to Europe using this visitor's visa or tourist visa and they have stayed. So you can just come over and stay. This is not a good idea because first of all, this is somebody who is a citizen of that country. And what they are doing is they're actually placing you in a position that you're going <laughs> to break the law of his country and you're going to be living with him. So I feel like you're putting yourself in a position of uh, like you are at his mercies, like he can do whatever he wants with you because like, what are you going to do? Are you going to go to the police? You're scared. So I don't think you should uh, live in a country without papers. Uh, and I also think that it's not a good idea for somebody to like um, invite you to his country and then they make you sign like a cohabitation agreement. You know, these temporary things that he can easily go to the city hall and cancel without you even knowing. I don't think that's a good idea. If somebody is planning to move you to his country, then they should facilitate uh, um, 
you are actually having uh, residency papers in that country so you can live as a free human being not live in fear um, I also think that uh, if they don't want to get married, there are other ways that he can actually facilitate you going there and maybe uh, getting to know each other without you actually breaking the law. For example, a student visa. You can go there uh, with a student visa and then uh, you guys can see how things go. Uh, another example I want to give is when somebody uh, from the U.S. Um, files a K-1 visa for you. A K-1 visa is a fiancé visa, okay? And this visa, <laughs> it's not the type of visa where you're like, uh, you just come over and let's get to know each other type of visa. That's not what K-1 visa is about. The K-1 visa is for people who have already decided they're getting married and they're only given 90 days to get married. So it's like you go to the United States, you're given 90 days, either you get married or you get out. Basically, that's, that's what it is. And in fact, when you go to the, when you land in the US, you're gonna be given a mini interview. This is like a, a short version of the interview you went through at the US embassy. And the reason I know this is because I've gone through the process. I got the K-1 visa. I went all the way there and I went back to my country. <laughs> I think I should like come with a story time where I can tell you in details what happened in this case. Uh, but um, I was granted the K-1 visa. And I just want to say K-1 visa is a long process. Actually, it's almost the same as CR-1 visa, you know, the spousal visa. Like the time period is, is, is the same, okay? It's very similar. Like if you're lucky, you can um, maybe wait for one year but this K-1 visa can go up to two years. You can like wait up to two years to get the K-1 visa. So tell me why <laughs> you would wait for two years and then go to the United States and stay there without papers. And you're living with a U.S. citizen because it's a U.S. citizen who petitioned for you. And in my case, it was an American, like a born and raised American. It's not like these uh, Africans who moved to the U.S. and then they become American citizens. This is an American citizen. So um, actually, for me, when it got to the point where like it dawned on me, like, like I'm, I'm not getting married, and it's either I stay here without papers or I go back to my country. For me, I chose to go back to my country, but uh, it was a very difficult choice to make because as we know, as Africans, America is, you know, going to the United States, it's like, oh my God, everybody is like, I want to go to United States. And um, for me, after I discussed with this person, I was like, are you like, seriously, like we are not getting married? And uh, he was like, no. And, you know, a lot of Africans come to United States and they stay anyway. So I don't know why you are making it a big deal. You can just stay. And for me, I was thinking, you know, living in the same house with an American citizen who is actually suggesting that I break the law that didn't sit in well with me. Like, I'm not about that life. And actually, uh, he, he, like, it, went, it got to a point where, uh, you know, I was like, I didn't come here to be undocumented. I didn't come here to live here as an illegal immigrant and live in fear. And every time I see the, you know, the, the police cars, I'm, I'm always scared. And I'm always scared that you're going to call immigration me or somebody's going to call immigration me. This is not the type of life I was, you know, you know like looking forward to, to come and living here in, in the United States. So he, he, came, <laughs> he came up with an idea which was, that is actually like the feather that broke the camel's back. Like if I had not decided to go, to, uh, to go back to my country, this is what made me decide that I am definitely going back to my country. So he came up with an idea that he, had, um, he has a cousin of his, uh, like I can use the idea of that cousin, sort of like uh, identity theft. Okay, I, I don't know if we, if we can call it identity theft, but it was more like we'll have an agreement with that cousin of his that I should use her ID. And so now I will like become 
her everything i do i'm gonna be using her id and then i should be paying her amount some amount of money uh, for using her id Th this was a horrible idea guys F for me i don't know what you think please leave your comments below and tell me what you think this is an american guy who had filed a petition a fiance visa petition and now what he's telling me is that i can uh, Steal for me, I feel like it's stealing somebody's identity because I was gonna pretend I'm that person, okay? I was gonna, and I don't know how we were gonna do it because the lady didn't even look anything like me, so I'm not even sure what he was planning to do or how, like, whew, it was messed up, it was a mess. So I was like, How can you think like this would pass? Like, I don't even have an American accent, and and in. <laughs> As much as I can try, I, will, I would never be able to have an American accent. Like I really, as you can see, I have like a really thick uh, Kenyan accent. So I really don't know how he, I think he was setting me up so I can get arrested. Because guys, how, how, how was it, how was it going to happen? Okay. I was going to get uh, this, this, um, lady's driver's license i'm gonna be using her driving license i was gonna get basically i was gonna become her that scared me that scared me i was like nope forget about it i'm going back home i'm in fact i would rather live in the u.s undocumented than actually steal somebody else's identity an american citizen identity imagine that would have landed me like in prison for a, a very long time, I think. Like a Kenyan woman, a woman from a third world country, and then I'm coming there and then I'm stealing somebody else's identity, an American citizen's identity. Please, if you get involved with somebody who is not willing to facilitate you having legal papers to live in that country, run. Okay, run because you're going to get yourself into a lot of trouble, a lot of trouble. I could not think like living in a country where I'm, I'm constantly scared. And actually, um, he had a, a friend who had come from this uh, Caribbean, uh, uh, Caribbean islands who had uh, actually gone to the U.S. with a K-1 visa and then they didn't get married. And that lady was blackmailing that money. She was making that man's life a living hell. She was demanding money from him and constantly threatening to report him to the immigration. I was, I was not going to be about that life. No, sir. No, thank you. <laughs> Okay, the next uh, thing we're going to discuss is when somebody tells you to uh, lose weight or gain weight, but mainly they ask you to, they ask or tell you to lose weight. They're like, yeah, yeah, you're a beautiful woman. If only you can lose a couple of pounds and maintain that figure. Uh, I don't think this is a good idea because I, as women, I don't think you can guarantee that you're going to maintain that figure. We know our weight goes up and down. Our bodies are constantly shifting. So uh, if somebody is just, you know, just uh, demanding that you, you, you maintain a certain figure and uh, that is not going to work. And I think this relationship is not going to go anywhere because as soon as you start uh, gaining weight, which happens sometimes, sometimes you can't even help it. Like it's a hormonal thing. It's a, it's an aging thing. It's a, you can't help it. So, um, if you get involved with somebody like this, you're going to have a miserable life. Ask me, I know. I've been in, in also in, in such situation where I got involved with somebody who was constantly monitoring what I was eating, what I was doing, how much I was weighing, how much I was gaining. And if I gain like even few pounds, he, he, you know, he, he, he used to drive me insane until I lose that weight. So please don't in, get involved with somebody who is demanding uh, you lose weight. Because uh, for me, I think once somebody starts uh, constantly pointing, pinpointing, uh, look at this, uh, look at your body now, look at this, it actually affects your mental health and it becomes now that you're looking at yourself in the mirror and then you're like, oh my God, yeah, maybe I think I am gaining weight. Yeah, I think I'm gaining weight. And then what happens, because I know, because I've been through this, what happens is you lose your appetite. 
Okay, you don't want to, you become uh, enemies with food. <laughs> you know, there was a time I was actually just living on tea because you're scared. You don't, like, you don't want to feel anything in your tummy because uh, if you eat and you feel you're, you're filled up, you're like, oh my God, I'm going to get fat. Oh my goodness, I ate too much. So please don't get involved with somebody who is con constantly monitoring your weight and what you're eating. And especially like when, um, let's say for example you go out and then you order some food and the, oh i don't think you should eat all that that is not healthy are you gonna eat all that please don't get involved with such people you you, you are just gonna uh, put your mental health at risk okay not only are you gonna put your physical health at, at risk but you're also gonna put your mental health at risk when he asks you or tells you to find another woman so the two of you can become sister wives <laughs> you know um polygamy as much as polygamy is is allowed in in i think in most countries in africa in kenya polygamy is allowed you can have uh, more than one wife but this these relationships don't don't actually don't actually work they are not they are not successful we've seen couples who are uh, celebrities who have been uh, you know posting on social media and look at our family and look at how successful this polygamous marriage is, is 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 going and then we just found out that the the main wife the the real wife actually moved out long time ago so it's it, it has all been um it's all been a scam like they've been posting all these things on social media oh look at this polygamous family and look how wonderful it is and then it turns out the wife moved out long long time ago long time ago so um if a foreigner is telling you to find uh, another girl and and then uh, you 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 all can be be one big happy family you know very well that's not gonna work <laughs> it's not gonna work and uh, I think we shouldn't uh, be involved in, in things just because it's a foreigner who is asking us to do it. And I know a lot of you are like, yes, we are risk takers. You know, we, we, can, we can do this whole thing. We can do threesomes and open marriages and things like that. Then I think, I think you're not serious about the relationship. Maybe you're just there to gain whatever it is you're gaining, whether it's the green card or money or whatever it is. Because if you really love someone, um, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't. Anyway, this, this is open to discussion. If you can find somebody else and you, two of you can become sister wives, please leave your comments below. I would like to read those comments. Uh, but for me, it's a no. <laughs> I feel like um, either we are together or we are not okay there is no we are together and then you're together with somebody else and then I'm together with somebody else uh, I think either we are together as a couple or we are not so then you're free to do whatever you want and I'm free to do whatever I want that's my opinion this next one I just want to start by saying uh, money is power okay and money is freedom money is freedom uh, I'm talking about when somebody asks you to become a housewife, okay? Meaning that you're going to depend on him 100% financially, like you're not going to have anything of your own, okay? You, you're not going to have any money of your own. You're just going to be depending on him 100%. And uh, this, I think, is not a good idea because... Um, when it comes to dating outside your culture things are different okay i know as africans we can you know we can be housewives but then again in an african uh, setting even a housewife she's not actually like a, a completely dependent of this man because um in many cases, you know, women have these uh, uh, chamas, these uh, women support groups and, 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 and these um, things, they do the merry-go-round and stuff like that. And he, she's getting money from the husband to contribute to those support groups, okay? So she's, she's making money. We've seen a lot of these women groups uh, that are really advanced where they're actually investing in real estate and they're just... Um, 
they're just creating streams of passive income they're, they're getting income they're at home but they're actually making money so when it comes to african setting and, you, and when when you talk about a housewife it's not actually like 100 percent depending on the man the the wife will have some money because the wife is in charge of uh grocery shopping and taking care of the home she's in charge of decorating the, the home she just needs to tell the husband how much money she needs to buy curtains to buy uh, whatever it is she needs to decorate the home so she she does actually uh, take have money she does touch money okay and in 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 um most cases you'll find actually the wife has a bank account and and you know she just gives the budget to the husband and the husband just deposits the money to her account then she can take care of the grocery shopping take care of things that needs to be taken care of so it's not like really 100 percent uh, the woman is just there begging all the time give me give me money for this give me money to buy underpants give me money to buy my menstrual stuff give me no the woman actually has some money that she she's in control of if if this household is um the type that the man is actually making enough so he's like i am making enough to sustain the household so it's not an issue um the woman will have some money but for you who is getting involved in this intercultural um, marriage or relationship You'll find when he says he wants you to be a housewife, it means you are you are one hundred percent dependent of him. So that means you're gonna be begging. You become a beggar. Actually, he's turning you into a beggar. You're gonna be begging for everything. Oh, I need fifty dollars. I need fifty dollars to go and 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 do my nails. And then he says you don't need to do your nails. And this is why I said money is freedom. Oh, I need one hundred dollars. I need to go out to, with my girls. I need to go out with my friends. So no, you you don't need to go out with your friends. Besides, I don't like those friends anyway. So you're not gonna go out. I'm not paying for that. Freedom is gone. Also, it takes away your freedom of speech because you don't want to piss him off because you need him for everything uh, and you can't go anywhere. So actually, you're a prisoner. You cannot speak your mind. You cannot do anything. You have no, uh, um, mm, you have no possibility of doing anything because you have no money. So money is power. Money is freedom. Anyone who is asking you to be a one hundred percent housewife. And you will have no money whatsoever, nothing under your name, absolutely nothing. Everything is coming out of his pocket. Some of them will actually even do the grocery shopping themselves, the men. You know, it's not like Africa. Africa, you'll find uh, men don't get involved with kitchen things and stuff. But this, this is a person who will be going to the fridge and taking notes of everything that is needed. Or they'll tell you, just make a list and I'll bring everything. So you are just sitting there and you have nothing. This is not a good idea in my opinion. Being a housewife, unless you are a housewife and you are getting allowance, wifely allowance, every month he's depositing some money into your bank account that you're in full control of. That way you can go out when you want to with your friends. You can go and have your hair done. You can have your nails done. You can do some shopping if you want to without you begging all the time. Don't let them turn you into a beggar. <laughs> This next one is gonna sound uh, made up. It's gonna sound unreal, but it was actually real. This is a conversation I actually had with somebody on a video call. And actually I've seen ladies also leaving comments about this uh, on my videos. So um, I spoke to this person and um, the thing he was uh, asking for was quite strange. Uh, this man said that he was looking for uh, an African slave. He was looking to own an African slave. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, this is a BDSM type of thing. It's no big deal. People do this anyway. Like, this is not a big deal. No, actually, that's not what he was looking for. Because I had dealt with people who were talking about BDSM and things like that. And I had researched uh, that topic and I knew, you know, a few things about that. So I was like, ah, so you are into BDSM. And he was like, mm, not exactly. I, I actually want to be a real slave owner. So I was like, I was intrigued. I was like, how will this work? Like, you know, make it make sense. 
Uh, first of all, he told me that he wished he lived in those days. You know, he's been reading history. He's an American. So he's been reading history about uh, how things used to work in those days, you know, during the slave days and the, and the slave owners and stuff. And he was like, he wished he lived in those days. But since he didn't uh, live in those days, he would like to have the experience and he was going to pay for the experience. Um so I said, uh, how exactly like are you gonna do this? Because you know, based on what I have seen, uh, those slaves, uh, you know, th this is horrible. Like it's really horrible. How can you even think about this? He said, well, um, I'm not gonna. He said, well, I'm not gonna like do things that would uh, land you in hospital. But I, I would like to have a slave in every sense of the word and he said this is how it's gonna work i want somebody who can sign a contract of two years or five years and i'm gonna pay uh, for that uh, also he said that he was gonna facilitate uh, you getting a green card and um, i said make it make sense like how are you gonna go about it he said well if you agree to do it and you sign the contract the first thing i'm gonna do is deposit some money into your bank account and then um, I'm going to come and get married to you. And that way I'll bring you to the U.S. on a spousal visa. So you'll go there as a wife, like um, like on the outside, you're, you're a wife, but uh, you, you have a secret agreement uh, with him uh, where you're going to become his slave and um i said well so what does it entail exactly and because I, I i just wanted to like pick his brain and see where he's coming from and and how he was gonna do this thing and he said well um i'm gonna he gave me details he he actually forwarded me the the whole contract you know he emailed me the contract and uh, i read through it and um not that I was going to consider the, the deal, but it's just that I wanted to educate myself and see like w what exactly this thing was about. So what he was saying was that um, you sign the contract and then he comes and marries you and then he files for a, a CR1 petition, which is a spouse of visa. And then once you get to the US, that's when now the contract actually officially begins because he wasn't going to do that like when you're in Kenya or when, when, when you're still in your country. It was going to take place when you actually land in the U.S. So um, he said, well, you're going to gain the green card and you're going to gain the monetary gain, you know, you're going to get the money and stuff. But that was quite scary. <laughs> that was actually scary. I, I, after that, I actually ended up uh, reporting his account on that dating website. Of course, I know that uh, won't help much because he can always create another um, account. But he was actually a paying member. So I don't even think my reporting did anything because I was a free member and he was a premium member. So he was paying for this, for their services. So I don't think they took any action. But I actually submitted um, some of the chats we were having and I, I reported the account, but anyway. So again, this next one also is gonna sound um, <laughs> made up, it's gonna sound unreal, but it's very real, okay? Um, the reason why I'm bringing these topics here is because these are taboo topics. People, people whisper about these things, you know, they, they talk about those things and they're like, oh my God, oh my God. But I want us to bring these issues to the light. I want us to discuss these issues because as much as you're like, oh, those are just uh, Americans or Europeans just uh, trolling and pushing African women to see how far they would go for a green card or for um, for money and for, for, for those things. But the truth of the matter is these people do exist. These people are real. <laughs> they are not fake. They are actually real and they mean what they want. Okay, so don't go there accepting these things saying, well, uh, it's just somebody who was just trying me and to see how far I would go. I don't think this is like, how can this happen in this day and age? Like who wants to own a slave? Like who wants uh, somebody to do this? These things do exist. Okay, so don't take this lightly. 
<laughs> so anyway, the next one was somebody uh, who said, well, um, I'm looking for a Ugandan woman. And because you are from Kenya, and I know Kenya borders Uganda, I think you could actually possess what I'm looking for. And um, <laughs> it's funny because a lot of these people think Africa is, is a country anyway. So I was actually impressed that he thinks Uganda and Kenya are two different countries. So th that was impressive because a lot of them think Africa is, is, a, is a country and we live on top of, of trees and we don't have electricity and we don't have anything. Um, so anyway, he said... I think you could maybe possess what you, what I'm looking for because I think maybe you share cultural practices. You know, Kenya and Uganda, maybe you do share uh, cultural practices. I was like, okay, so what is it? Like, uh, what, what is it exactly that you're looking for? Because for me, I was thinking, well, uh, maybe he's looking for a submissive woman because a lot of these foreigners have always been going to Uganda and, and, and generally to third world countries looking for uh, submissive women and old fashioned women, uh, you know. So he's, he didn't say anything about submission and he was very respectful, guys. He wasn't like a rude or anything or disrespectful. He was very respectful and he explained exactly what it is that he was looking for. He was actually looking for a woman who uh, possesses uh, elongated criteria. Hmm? So, um, and he sent me some measurements in terms of uh, centimeters and uh, I was like, mm, no, I, I, I don't possess that. So he went on to suggest that I engage in these uh, practices where uh, the elongation is performed. Of course, I said no. So if you meet somebody like this who is uh, suggesting that you engage in these practices, uh, run. <laughs> okay. And... Um, the next one is also weird and is actually the opposite of what this guy was asking. And before you say it's probably the same guy and he was trolling. Therefore, when you said no to this, now he turned the story around and he came uh, with a different story. I don't remember the time frame between uh, this guy and the next one. But I do know that there were two different people I video called both of them. In fact, this one that I'm about to talk about. I had video called him severally before he actually uh, brought this conversation. So, um, so anyway, so this guy, what he was now looking for was somebody who has undergone the FGM procedure. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's actually uh, a procedure, a horrible procedure that we've been fighting Again, it's for a long time. The Kenyan government has been fighting this uh, for a long time and it's actually against the law. Okay. Uh, this is a procedure that is performed on uh, little girls and it's a removal of criteria. Okay. And it depends on who is which uh, uh, tribe is performing this procedure. Som sometimes they, they just like, you know, scrape everything and... It's, it's horrible. It's a horrible procedure. And I was very surprised to see a foreigner who is actually talking about this. And it's so unfortunate that a foreigner would actually <laughs> talk about this because they seem to be the ones coming and say, oh, Africans are doing, doing this to girls and Africans are horrible people. Why? How can they do this? And we are fighting it. And then you find this kind of person. So, um... Of course, I said no, and I was like, how can you ask for something like this, knowing very well, first of all, I don't know if you've done research, but this is against the law, okay? And also, it's, 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 it's brutal and it's horrible to do this to, to, to women. Um, so we ended up uh, having a fight, and, and, and <laughs> the video call was, was disconnected, but be very careful if you find somebody who is asking for these things and i know as i said a lot of you will be like we are risk takers anyway i can always uh, um, say i've undergone this procedure and then later he'll find out he'll find out i haven't so that's it 
anyone who is asking for something like this it's not somebody to be trusted okay it's not somebody who is to be trusted and this means he can do anything to you anything so be very careful if somebody mentions things like this run and don't look back run and our last one this is a big one okay this is something that uh, ladies have been complaining about they've been asking about they've been um, i'm gonna actually put some comments uh, screenshots of comments that i've been getting on my uh, tiktok videos and this is uh, in in kenya we call it uh, sim 2 okay this is something that is de describing somebody who is uh, demanding to have sex the not in, in the normal way um, what i mean is instead of uh, him wanting to use the point of entry he wants to use the point of exit i think you get my drift because i want to make i want to make this video clean so i don't want to use terms that could uh, make my video you know crazy so this is somebody who is um you know is somebody who wants to use point of exit in, instead of using point of entry and we had this discussion i had actually raised this discussion on one of my live streams on tiktok and uh, we were having a heated uh, discussion because i like bringing these taboo topics because i want us to discuss and i, I want to hear what people think about these things and and um just have their opinions and also share my own opinion and as we were going on and on about no no it's dangerous and it's horrible why would somebody even think of doing something like this especially those people who are saying i'm straight you know i'm i'm, I'm uh, why would he do this and then there's a, there's this lady who uh, actually joined my uh as my co-host they requested to join as a co-host you can do that on tiktok and i added her and she was like um i don't know why you people are, are talking so much against this thing and mind you she had joined with a pseudo account so we don't know who it was <laughs> so she didn't have a picture she didn't have a, a name on, on on this account so we actually didn't know she didn't want to expose herself who she was but she claimed that uh, she does it and she's fine and we shouldn't assume that everybody is against it. So I would like to actually um, read your comments below because this is something that is open for discussion. But for me, I say run, okay? If somebody uh, demands this and, 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 and tells you this is what I enjoy and from time to time I'm going to be doing this, run. That's my opinion. So I don't know what your opinion is, but I feel like if somebody cl claims to be straight, you know, you both of you are heterosexuals, like why are you doing things uh, against nature? Like why are you doing things the wrong way? Uh, for me, it's a no. I don't know what you think. So I'm going to leave those uh, comments on the screen so you can see what ladies have been uh, complaining about. And um, I feel like, you shouldn't agree to something just because it's a foreigner who is asking you to do this or it's a foreigner who is uh, um, demanding that you do this and you're like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, we are risk takers, we're gonna risk everything, we must get that green card, we must get that money, we must go uh, for those expensive vacations so we can pressure people on social media. What's the point of going on a, a, a expensive vacation and it's all pain, pain, pain? Like, you know, and I, I no, you know what? I feel like you should uh, stand your ground, uh, hold your values, okay? Just be yourself and be patient and look for that man that, that you want to find and you will find him, okay? If it's meant to be, if it's meant to be that you're gonna find uh, that man on a dating website, you will find him, okay? So I feel like you should uphold your values and I feel like you shouldn't uh, change who you are or accept things that go against what you believe and go against uh, nature just because you want to please this foreign guy. Uh, you know, people have gone through a lot, you know, just trying to do things that uh, please people 
and then you are actually damaging yourself. Why? Why would you do that? Just keep, keep uh, you know, keep pushing, keep trying, keep trying to find that person and you're going to find him. You know, um, it's unfortunate that people actually do these things. They do horrible things to themselves. And then in the end, you might find that person is not even going to end up with you because these are sick people. These, these are not normal people, honestly, in my opinion. Okay, if somebody loves you and if somebody is looking to uh, be with you as, as his wife, as his partner, as somebody that he cares about, um, I don't think they will be demanding these kinds of things from you. I don't think they will be doing these horrible things to you, taking you to their countries and, and, and they, they make sure you don't have papers so you are like, you are like their prisoner. Uh, uh, taking you to be their house slaves in, uh, and uh, when they are saying that uh, they want you to be their housewives it's not actually being a housewife it's more like being a house slave these, these things it's uh, um, i don't agree with that anyway i would like to hear your opinions on these things that i have shared today in this video and also i know there are things maybe i have left out because i was mainly going uh, based on my article and also based on things that ladies have talked about on my videos so if there is something that i forgot to mention and you would like to to mention please leave that comment down below uh, also if there are things that you don't agree with uh, things that i have mentioned leave those comments uh, below let's discuss so uh, my name is Rose. If you enjoy these types of uh, videos, if you like my, uh, my content, please consider subscribing. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a big thumbs up and I shall see you on my next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.